with your favorite fearless hero. So, here's the thing. If you asked me yesterday what I would be painting today, I would have guessed a lot of different things, but definitely not this. But that's inspiration for you. You never know how or when it's going to strike, but when it does, you gotta roll with it. So I'm painting a cat. But not just any cat. I am Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots sounds... Puss in Boots is maybe one of the worst character name translations ever. Because this guy here is actually called Der Gestiefelte Kater, which is a much cooler name and a much cooler sounding name, especially if you speak German. But I'll fully admit that I'm biased and also that I'm maybe a bit more enthusiastic and excited about this than I maybe should be, but come on. It's a freaking cat in freaking boots with a freaking salt. Out of all the things I could paint, all the subjects, ideas, trends, things that have the potential to go viral, why would I paint a sword-wielding cat wearing boots and a freaking cavalier's hat? And how on earth did it make me go level 100 and bang out one of my favorite and maybe best paintings in recent times? So good in fact that I have a very cool announcement in this video that I couldn't be more excited about in the giveaway. Well, let's start with the why then first. The simple answer is because inspiration. The slightly longer answer is inspiration is a sneaky little rascal and it arrives in mysterious ways, often when we least expect it. It might strike while waiting in line for a coffee or in the quiet hours of the night when we lay sleepless in bed or when you watch a movie that is so good and inspiring that you can't stop thinking about it to the point that when you wake up and open your eyes in the morning, you decide you have to pick up a brush and use this spark of inspiration to create something of your own. Which is precisely what happened to me after watching the most recent Puss in Boots movie. A movie so fantastic, oozing with creativity and top-notch artistry that it sent me straight into an inspiration-fueled frenzy and a burning need to make something myself. I don't want to talk about the movie here, but if you haven't seen it, do yourself a favor, go and watch it after finishing this video. From the animation style, which masterfully blends 3D animation with 2D illustration and even stop motion to phenomenal storytelling and dialogue that makes you think about deep questions and keeps you grinning from ear to ear during the entire movie. Highly recommend 10 out of 10. You know, there are times when making art feels more like a burden than anything else. Self-doubt, frustration, perfectionism. Nothing seems to work, nothing seems to be good enough and everything basically feels like a constant and eternal struggle. But then there are these golden days where everything just makes sense. And the moment you sit down to make art, everything around you seems to disappear completely. Those rare moments of pure inspiration and creative joy that essentially make you tap back into your innocent artistic self. You know, the one that used to go to bed with a big fat smile on your face and couldn't wait to get back into it the moment you woke up. The golden days when every new painting, drawing, written line, sculpture or whatever came with a sense of adventure, excitement and genuine personal fulfillment. Makes you wonder why every painting or project doesn't feel this way, but I guess it also isn't that complicated. What starts as a wild whirlwind of excitement, impulse and inspiration when we're young eventually shifts into overthinking, necessity and Let's be honest, a sprinkle of ego once we get older. The initial spark of creation might still be there, but it's now mingled with a more complex mix of motivations and reasons. And who knew that it would take this ever so charming, cunning and impeccably dressed gentleman here 
for me to rediscover that untamed passion fueled fire that used to drive basically everything that I did when I was younger. So that's the inspiration part. But then what? How does that turn into something? Or how do you use that to create something? Well, the first thing that I did the morning I woke up was reread the original story of the character by the Brothers Grimm. A lovely story about how cleverness, resourcefulness and loyalty can help a person overcome difficult situations and lead to a better life. After that, I looked at some old illustrations to see and get a feel of how the different iterations of the character looked over the years. And let me tell you, some of the old drawings and engravings are so exquisite and so charming that I could spend hours looking at them. Which I actually did. I mean, just look at this guy here. And from here I of course could have painted a fan art piece or a character or still from the movie. After all, it was the original source of inspiration. But after reimagining Snow White a few weeks ago, I thought it would be kinda cool to continue the whole breathing life into classic fairy tale characters theme and make my own version of it. I don't know about you, but I'm getting excited about this. I will admit that at this point this painting does look a bit chaotic. But don't worry, I haven't lost my painting skills. This is actually how it's supposed to look at this stage. This is just the result of me focusing on one thing and one thing only. And that is to create the best final painting that I can. And when you do that, unfortunately, you have to make some sacrifices. And one of those is that the painting mid-process will look a bit ugly, a bit clueless and a bit chaotic. But Hey, if that's the price, I don't mind. Gotta be a bit patient and keep going and hopefully in the end we will end up with a nice looking painting. I know how difficult it is sometimes to make corrections and turn a messy painting around. And I can only do that because I have spent quite a bit of time training and developing an eye for proportions and basically being able to copy what I see exactly how I see it. It takes a lot of time and countless hours of drawing practice and copying and luckily I don't have to do that anymore these days. But fortunately there are great tools out there these days that help people get started with that and also help come up with great compositions like this video sponsor Just Sketch Me. A tool that helps you spend less time planning and more time making good art by allowing you to create your own compositions and references. Finding good reference pictures for art can sometimes be challenging or next to impossible. But you can use Just Sketch Me's library of 3D models and objects to create your own pose and scene reference images without knowing anything about 3D modeling. There is no need to download anything or learn a program since it's browser based and the most important and best part it's super easy to use and free. You can use it to train your drawing skills of course by drawing and practicing different poses but you can also use it to make intricate and complex compositions that you would have a hard time creating any other way. So thanks to Just Sketch Me for sponsoring this video and if you want to try it out you can sign up and use the link in the description and the best part Just Sketch Me is available for completely free with no time limit. So check it out if you're curious now and now back to the painting. So the look and design of my version here is loosely inspired by a musketeer. I always thought that the character of Puss in Boots kinda looked like one of the three musketeers. I also wanted to paint a less cartoonish version. That was very important. I wanted it to be more similar to the illustrations from the engravings that I was so impressed by. And finally, I wanted this painting to simultaneously look a bit like a 17th century painting, but also a modern minimalistic work of art. I talked a bit about capturing the essence of a character and what makes a good redesign when I painted my own version of Snow White. But let me break it down for you one more time. Super simple. If anyone from Disney or Amazon is watching this by the way, you might want to write this down. Step 1. Look for the standout features. Find the eye-catching elements that make a character stand out. Like hairstyles, silhouettes, signature clothing or unique facial expressions. Step 2. Dig into their story. 
the character's personality and backstory are absolute key. So think about how their design elements capture and reflect their life experiences and story. Step three, listen to the fans. Very important. See what the audience loves about the character and how they remember them. Hear that Disney? You gotta find out which design bits make the people go, oh, that is so them. And lastly, number four, consider their role and world. Think about the character's purpose in the story and how their design connects to their abilities, their job, their culture and keep these important aspects always in mind when you make your redesign. And that's basically it. Simple as that. Now, about the standout features. Some of you may have already noticed that I got pretty much every element that our charming fella here is known for, except for one thing. At least not in a traditional way. But there's actually a very good reason why I decided to go with a slightly different take on it. Whenever I tried out the classic boots, it always looked like a guy that got the head of a cat photoshopped onto him, which completely ruined the design. As it turns out, making an anthropomorphic cat isn't as straightforward as one might think. Finding the right balance between fantasy and realism and uncanny valley and believability is actually not that easy. So in the end, I decided to stylize the boots into something more akin to leathery socks. This allowed me to show some additional animal features, which made the whole design much more believable while still capturing the general essence of the character. It also looked much less cartoony and photoshopped, for lack of a better word. And if I may say so, it worked perfectly. At least, I couldn't be happier about the design choice which I can't really say about the rest of the painting because at this point things weren't exactly going into the direction I hoped for. So right now I feel like I could mess this painting up at any moment and if I keep going I probably will. The thing is that the background of the painting and the color of my studio wall look so similar that it's really hard for me to say if the painting looks good or if the painting actually looks shitty. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on the other side of the studio in front of a white wall and hopefully that will allow me to see how the painting actually looks and allow me to figure out where I need to go next basically. So I don't end up crying at the end of the day because I messed this painting up at the very last moment. Yeah. Wish me luck. And just as I suspected, as soon as I moved the painting in front of a neutral white wall, I realized that it wasn't quite working. The background was just too dark and it didn't really work for me. But the only way to change that meant to completely repaint the background and at the same time some other parts of the character, which is a huge risk. Repainting is usually a big gamble that half of the time does the opposite of what you hope for. So I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't a bit nervous, but you know what? I was so determined to turn this painting into the best version it can be that I took a giant leap of faith and decided to take the risk anyway. And what can I say? I couldn't be happier that I did. When I started this painting project, I never imagined I would end up painting one of my absolutely favorite paintings in recent times. But here we are. Which finally brings me to the exciting news that I've been itching to tell you about and the giveaway that I teased at the beginning of the video. Because this handsome gentleman here and Snow White will now be officially available as limited edition fine art prints and 
They are the first release of my new official series called Fine Art Fairy Tales. This has got to be one of my favorite print releases and let me tell you, I couldn't be more excited. Both of these prints will come in a regular size and an absolutely spectacular looking oversize which is gonna be super limited to only 10 and the best thing, this is only the beginning. These two prints and these two paintings are only the first in this new series that I couldn't be more excited about. And to celebrate this release and this epic creative journey and this new series, I want to give away one of each of the regular prints. One of them here and one of them over on Instagram. The only thing you have to do is give the video a like and write a comment down below. And I will randomly pick a winner from the comment section next weekend and I will toss a coin to determine which print will go to the Instagram winner and which one will go to the lucky person here on YouTube. I hope you're just as excited about this as I am. Let me know in the comments down below which fairy tale you would like to see me tackle in the future and include in this series. I would love to hear your ideas and thoughts and I'm curious to hear which fairy tale could use a bit of fresh air. Head over to my website and grab one of these absolutely spectacular looking prints while you can and yeah. Thanks a bunch for watching friends. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.